This is a story that happened to me when I was a child. I've never shared this with anyone before, so here we go. This took place around 2008, if my memory serves me right. My family and I had just moved to Costa Rica, and we enjoyed spending most of our time at the beach, particularly one near a lovely little river I like to swim in. It was on this same beach that nine-year-old me found a dead body floating in the ocean. To give a little context, I had been playing on the beach, which we thought was relatively safe, so my parents were farther up. I remember seeing something floating in the water, but I wasn't sure what it was, so I went to investigate and found a dead man just floating there. Part of his leg had been hacked off. It was obvious he had not drowned. The man had clearly been murdered. Around this time, we had heard about a recent string of murders that had happened both on the Caribbean side of Costa Rica, where we were, and on the Pacific side. The murders had been happening every six months, rotating between both regions of the country, so there was reason to assume this murder had been done by the same person since it seemed to fit the timeline. As far as I can remember, the details of the murder were never disclosed in any of the local newspapers, only that the man had been a tourist from England. So there was no way for anyone who had not seen the man on the beach to know the specifics of his murder. Eventually, the whole thing blew over, and we returned to that same beach. I can't quite remember the time frame, but it was definitely within a few months of me finding the dead man that this next part happened. One day, I was swimming in the river with my mother, when a very strange man popped up out of the water, startling us. He had a spear gun in hand and a snorkel mask on. He began talking to my mom, and I think we could both tell that something was just off about this guy. I wasn't really paying attention for most of their conversation, but I do remember him bringing up the recent murder on the beach, and he seemed to know a lot of details about it, which, as I previously mentioned, were not available to the public. He also talked about how he traveled between the Caribbean and the Pacific side of Costa Rica, spending half a year in each spot. Eventually, they also got on the topic of what he did for a living, and he went into great detail about how he made the masks for the movie Eyes Wide Shut, and that he would make those masks, and I presume other ones, based on real live human emotions, and that he specifically liked capturing the look of fear. We were totally taken aback by this guy, and didn't really know what to do. Eventually, he just got back into the river and swam away, and thankfully, we never saw him again. I do not know if this is related or not, but the weird strain of murders suddenly stopped after that. I'm a 21-year-old female and have had plenty of creepy moments. This happened when I was 12. I was on vacation in Australia, visiting my brother Cam, who was 18 at the time. Cam, his girlfriend Freya, and I decided to take a walk to the beach, which was about 5 minutes from Cam's house. The beach was usually always crowded as it's a tourist destination, but it was an overcast day. There were still up to 1,500 to 2,000 people there, but it wasn't too bad compared to other times. We walked to the beach and then walked the 15 to 20 minutes it takes to get to the other side of the beach where there are shops and an ice cream stand. Once we reached the other side, Freya and I sat on some rocks to stop and enjoy the view while Cam went to get us some ice cream. He came back, and I tried to enjoy my ice cream, but the whole time, I felt as if someone was watching me. Cam and Freya wanted to go in the water, I have a phobia of being in open water, so I stayed on the rocks. I was sitting on my own until a slightly overweight, short-haired brunette woman, who looked in her late twenties and was on her cell phone, came and sat within earshot of me. She was speaking in German, which was a language I couldn't speak at the time. This woman kept glancing over at me, eyeballing me, not exactly being inconspicuous about it. I started to feel a little weird, and I was about to go get Cam or Freya when a guy in his late teens came over to me. He sat down between me and this woman. He spoke with a slight German accent and asked me, are you here with anyone? All I was thinking was stranger danger. He asked me again, are you here with anyone? 
I wanted him to go away, so I just said, my brother and his girlfriend, and I pointed to my brother who was now running up from the water towards me, looking angry. Then I felt a hand on my back gently pushing me forward. It was the young German guy. I'm positively freaking out now, so I ran to my brother. He looked me up and down quickly and sort of pushed me over towards Freya, who started asking if I was okay and checking me over. I looked over at my brother, not sure what to expect, but he and this guy were talking a lot calmer than I would expect for someone who was touching their little sister. Next thing I know, there are a couple of lifeguards walking towards us with two police officers, and they began talking to my brother and this German guy. Freya called her mom, and she came to collect us and take us home. I was still thinking that I was in trouble, until Cam and his mom, Eva, explained to me that the guy who asked me if I was with anyone actually helped me. As he was walking with his friends past me, he overheard the woman on her cell phone talking about me. She was describing me in detail, like my hair color, eye color, height, weight, what I was wearing, and even about my scar on my neck, which is actually difficult to see unless you either know it's there or if you really concentrate and look for it. The woman also said something along the lines of, wait till we're sure she's alone and I'll bring her. The guy, who I found out was named Rudy, told his friend, who went to get the lifeguards, who then called the police. Rudy then came and sat next to me to make sure she couldn't get to me. They couldn't find the woman because she left when Rudy moved me towards my brother. My brother would later tell me that a girl around my age, similar looking to me, was almost snatched off of a beach not far from him a week later, but her dad thankfully saved her. Rudy ended up being one of my brother's close friends, and I see him every time I visit Cam. So thank you, Rudy. Last December, I was visiting my family in Florida, and we spent some time in Treasure Island. My brother and I took my dog to the beach at about 2 a.m. to play fetch and have a good time. If you walk along the water, you can reach a few restaurants, bars, and hotels that line the beach. Out of nowhere, we saw someone walking quickly in our direction from over there, and a few moments later, we could make out that they were being followed. My dog is arguably very well trained. We work in search and rescue, and she has never once run off without permission, nor has she failed to return instantly when called. But that changed that night. She was about five feet from me when I saw her hackle shoot up. I went to grab her collar, but she took off in a full sprint, making some truly terrifying barking and growling sounds. We obviously took off after her. She reached the first person and stopped between them and the people behind them. She was barking, growling, and lunging. I finally caught up and put her on a leash. She had never reacted in that manner, so it was scary. The group following her ended up being three men who were probably in their early 30s. They started running in the other direction. I turned around, and the person being followed was a young woman around my age. We asked if she was okay, and she just broke down in tears and collapsed into my brother's arms. My dog insisted she get on the ground for some excited pup kisses and a soaking wet cuddle, which they both seemed to enjoy. She was far too overwhelmed to talk, so she got on her phone and rang her friend's number for us to talk to her. We were able to figure out where she was staying and walk her back to her hotel, where we met up with her friends and exchanged numbers to talk later. The next day, we all got together and she told us what had happened. She had gone out for a walk on the beach, stopped for a drink at the bar, drank a bit, and then just wasn't feeling right. She left the bar and soon noticed three men had followed her. She had been walking for about a mile at that point, terrified and slowly getting more and more disoriented. She doesn't remember much about the night, and we knew she was probably on something. We're still friends now, and we're all going to meet up for spring break when we'll all be back in Florida. I've never been more proud of my dog and more grateful that we were in the right place at the right time. I hate thinking about what could have happened. <laughs>